into that thunder. Did you hear that? It's raining. You want to see? Today, I went to get a new computer at Best Buy. Well, actually, I bought it at the Mac store, uh, a MacBook, and I had to take it to Best Buy to have Geek Squad do the migration and to help me with that because um, the Mac store, Genius Bar, is closed because of COVID. So, and I was there for a while, longer than I thought I would be because, um, you know, my ex was the one who did all of the technology. And now he is gone, baby gone, so it falls upon me. And I'm sure he would have gotten a really big kick out of seeing me kind of struggle to figure all of that out today. Uh, I had stuff on that computer. I didn't even know what it was. <laughs> I didn't know what it was for. I think I had three different services that were doing like pictures, saving them. And I had like something like 2,000, not 2,000, 20,000 pictures on my computer and they were being backed up in like three or four different places taking up space. Maybe I wouldn't have needed to buy a whole terabyte if I had known that I had the same, woo, the same repetition of pictures over and over again, but I did. Uh, anyway, I got a lot of that cleaned up and I learned a lot. Um, and I wanna tell you something, it, it sucks. It feels yucky to be abandoned um, and to have to figure out things that you never thought you were going to have to figure out. You have to hire people and pay them to do the things that your ex did. Um, it's not fun, you know. You were getting it for free. And I'm sure you could find some guy to come over and do it for free. But then again, nothing's free. Oh, that. Nothing's free. It wouldn't be free. You'd pay for it one way or another, right? So I guess what I want to talk about today is learned helplessness. During the course of a relationship with one of these people, oh, the wind is blowing cold rain on me. <sighs> okay, if a tornado comes, blows me away, well, what can I say? I've been living in Oz with the Tin Man. No, wait, I thought he was the Tin Man, but really he's, he is Oz, pretending to be almighty wizard guy, but really he's just this shriveled little kind of repulsive thing that is weak, just pretending to be almighty Oz. Yeah, anyway, yeah, I feel like maybe this, <laughs> it was the electricity went out a while ago. I thought, oh my gosh, here again, every time something happens, like I have to get a computer or I have to deal with it, about my ex and I'm thinking about him and thinking damn him he should be here if I'm gonna be in a tornado or a flood or some electrical shortage like I was during the snow apocalypse snow apocalypse that happened here in Austin back in the spring if I'm gonna go through something like that I earned the right to have him here with me and helping me and holding my hand and dragging me to safety right I earned that over 15 years, but anyway, that's another story for another day. They say you can be bitter or you can be better. I chose, I choose better instead of bitter, but you know, you got some anger there and lots of times, you know, I dream about it. I'm suppressing it and trying to play nice. And then I go to sleep and I dream about different ways to, you know, be vengeful and you know, even the score and have some kind of justice, yeah. There needs to be justice. Okay, that's another video for another day. The whole revenge and justice thing. Uh, what I want to talk to you about is the learned helplessness. So oftentimes because of issues that we have with attachment disorders, maybe abandonment issues, stuff like that, we allow ourselves to just turn over our power and become helpless just helpless. Like, I can't do anything for myself. I have to wait for 
my narcissistic psychopath to tell me what to do and or to do it for me or whatever because yeah I have no identity of my own Woo! I should stop making that noise and let you just hear the thunder I'm sorry um, anyway it's easy to um, to release your power to someone else and it's kind of a whole part of that abuse cycle thing that goes on with the narcissist. Um, and so when you're in recovery because you have been discarded, thrown away, jettisoned, abandoned, uh, kicked to the curb, whatever you want to say, or maybe you figured out what was happening and you managed to escape before that happened to you, that would be awesome if that's what happened to you. You're a better person than me stronger person if you were brave enough to do that. I couldn't do it. I was too trauma bonded. I was too addicted. He could have killed me and I would have stayed. He could have done heinous crimes. Well, he did do a couple of really bad things and I stayed. I stayed because I was an addict for the same reason that person injects heroin or takes the Oxycontin or the fentanyl or whatever you know, and they're like dead right there in the house with their kids. They do that because they're out of control. They're an addict and they cannot. It's just bigger than them. The, it's just bigger than them. And I know what that's like because I have that whole addict thing going on, even though I'm not addicted to alcohol or drugs or anything like that. This is a whole other kind of thing. You should read about that. The way that trauma bonding gets you addicted to your um, persecutor, Predator person. It's a lot of peas. Is that gonna thunder? Ooh, that sounds so pretty. Um, so what do you need to do, guys? You gotta learn to do things for yourself. Not just to learn to the do the things that they don't do anymore because they're not here, but you also need to learn how to do them because you know you're not helpless. You can do them. I do things now that, you know, I didn't do before, but that he used to do. I can do them. Sure, why not? I, there's no reason why I can't. And so now he's doing them for someone else. That's okay. Well, actually it's not okay, but uh, you know, it's something I have to accept. But this also affects your recovery. The part where you get over it. Um, the part where you move on because you can't move on. You can't get over it if you are just surrendering your power to another person and saying, oh, it's so hard. I can't do it. I need them. Well, they're not here. They probably, you know, should never have been here. And the truth is, um, they are what they are and you've got to do it. In your recovery, you also need to stand up, do things for yourself, with yourself, for yourself. All the answers to your closure, all the answers to your grief, to your trauma bonding, to your, just all the stuff that's going on that makes life so difficult. Oh my gosh, I'm getting rained on, look at that. Oh my gosh. That was your moment of zen, everybody. That was your moment of zen. Not your moment of Jen. That's me, Jen Cascada. It wasn't a moment of Jen Cascada. It was a moment of zen. <laughs> oh, wow, it's coming down hard. Cats and dogs. So, yeah, you've got to not look outside yourself for answers. Sure, you need support. You need friends. You need therapy. You need different modalities, tools, and tips in your toolbox. But you have to turn inward, heal what's in here. And you have to do that pretty much. You have to do it with your, in, the, in your quiet moments. Like right now, I'm all alone in this storm. Yeah, it would be better to have my husband here, curled up under a blanket, listening to the rain and sipping hot tea and like, eating stones or something, right? But he's not. He's gone. He's not able. He's impaired. He's sick. 
he's a dub. So you got to let it go. Let the fantasy go. What it was, what you thought it could be, what it probably never was. So let it go and, and work on yourself. That is not a message I know that you want to hear. I don't want to hear it. I don't want to have to do all that hard work. And I don't want to do it by myself. Uh, I want a partner. I, I feel like I deserve a partner. I, I was loyal. I was I was a good I was a good wife for the most part. Yeah, loyal and dedicated and yeah, always put him first. And look where that got me. So I need to stop trying to seek validation outside of myself. Turn inward and try to fix what's broken in there. And when I get that done, I will be free. He will no longer have a hold on me. And then I can have my moments of zen, like over oh, there with the rain, and peace. And maybe I can meet somebody who's not crazy, who's going to treat me bad and cheat and lie and do weird, perverted things. Maybe I'll find that person, even though I'm not young. Uh, who knows? Maybe they're out there. But that's, none of that's going to happen as long as I'm not okay and as long as I'm depending on other people to complete me or whatever, you know? The narcissist has their problems, but I've got mine too. And I've got a task. Whew, I've, got a, I've got a job to do. And you do too. This recovery thing, we need to work hard. Get free. Let them go. Move on. Life is so short. You don't know how long you're going to be here. We don't know how long till the end comes. So don't waste another minute. Get busy working on yourself. Turn inwards and, and heal that and become whole so that you don't need someone else to do that with that whole codependent, attached, weird attachment and abandonment stuff. Just say, hey, you know, I'm fine. I can enjoy this rain. I can enjoy this, I can be happy, and I don't need anybody. It would be nice to have somebody, but I don't need them. And I didn't need him at the computer store today. I got through that by myself, so to him, <laughs> right, I did it. And so it wasn't easy, I didn't want to do it, but I did. None of this is easy, and I don't want to do it, but I have to, and so do you. Well, that's my message for today. I'm going to let you go. I'll give you another minute of this Texas rainstorm, y'all. <laughs>